Tamil protesters have staged noisy demonstrations outside the hotel where Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajapatske is being staying during his controversial private visit to the UK. Their demand that he be prosecuted for war crimes came as a senior international lawyer told this programme that he believes that charges could be brought against troops, shown in a video broadcast on Channel 4 News earlier this week. That appeared to show them carrying out executions during last year's Sri Lankan civil war. Jonathan Miller has this report. The war might have been won by the president's men, but tonight a new battlefront opened up on the western flank of Park Lane, across from London's plush Dorchester Hotel, where President Rajapaksha is staying. Exiled Tamils, many brandishing the standard of the defeated Tamil Tigers, denouncing him as a terrorist and a war criminal. These people are asking for justice. That's what we're asking. We want an independent international investigation into war crimes and crimes against humanity committed by President Rajapaksa and his government. President Rajapaksa has been here since Monday, but his private visit's been so private that he's been invisible. This is archive footage of his inauguration two weeks ago. His government, though furious that the president's speech in Oxford, scheduled for tonight, was cancelled for security reasons. This cabinet minister said only failed states failed to provide adequate security for visiting heads of state. Britain, one newspaper said, unable to uphold its belief in free speech. But in the brutal final showdown of the war last year, journalists and independent observers were barred from the conflict zone, where it's thought that up to 30,000 Tamil civilians were killed. Sri Lankan journalists who've asked too many questions have been murdered or disappeared. Since Channel 4 News was expelled from Sri Lanka at the end of the war, we have sought to ask questions about accountability for possible war crimes. This has drawn the ire of the Sri Lankan government. We've also wanted to ask the president, as commander-in-chief, why he continues to refuse demands for an independent investigation into what happened. All our requests for interviews have been declined. But we were invited to a news conference this afternoon at the Sri Lankan High Commission addressed by the foreign minister. Why has the government of President Rajapaksha not allowed an independent, impartial, international inquiry into these allegations? Because we have put in place what we consider to be the best and the most effective and the most pragmatic mechanism. Now, since you asked me that question, I would like to tell you that the timing of all this is very significant. Channel 4, See, now, this material has been surfacing, not only Channel 4, some other media as well, at a time when something crucial for Sri Lanka is about to happen, either in Britain or in Western Europe. The minister was referring to our broadcasting of video footage which appears to depict Sri Lankan soldiers executing bound Tamil prisoners. He objected to our airing one such film on Tuesday, the president's first day in Britain. Tonight, we showed the executions video to an international criminal lawyer. I think the cases that can be made uh, in this video is first directed at the individuals, the perpetrators of these crimes, where their faces are shown, but also the possibility of looking at the commanders. Sri Lanka's commander-in-chief leaves London tomorrow. The only photographs of the president's trip on the front page of government websites today. Images of yesterday's private meeting with Defence Secretary Liam Fox, which parliamentarians today said sent the wrong signal. Tomorrow, the Global Tamil Forum will apply for an arrest warrant on war crimes charges against a major general who's in the president's retinue. If his visit to Britain was an attempt to turn a new page, all it's actually done is highlight uncomfortable questions about Sri Lanka's turbulent past. Jonathan Miller in London's Mayfair.